Okay, hi. So this is a foundation calculator test. It's aimed at about grades three to four. However, it's accessible to those who are doing higher paper as well. Please do download the paper from the website. Have a go at each of the questions, then compare your solutions. Okay, so on to question number one. Now, we are going to be using calculator for this, but I won't show the calculator too often on the screen itself. So we've got Jonas invest 6,400 at an interest rate of 6%. So the important thing with that is that means with it being compound he's actually getting a hundred and six percent because a hundred percent of it belongs to Jonas and that's his initial capital and then six percent of it is actually his interest rate so the way that we would work this out is we would say it's the same as saying total equals original times multiplier to the power of n and that's the formula now if you're not sure about that formula if you um, have a look at the website there are some lots of examples of compound interest type questions please do have a go download those okay so the original amount that Jonas invests is going to be 6,400 the multiplier is going to be 106 percent now you've got to remember that 106 percent as a decimal is 1.06 and n is three years because it's three years he invests so that's going to give him 7622.50 which is hey, the value of his investment at the end of the three-year period okay hopefully that's all right for you let's move on then to question number two now question number two deals with a uh, car depreciation now in this particular one we've got a car that was bought as new and then after one year it's worth 15 percent less so if i put that into mathematical terms what we're basically saying is the total is equal to 85 percent of the new price Okay, so if I now feed some information into this, I can say 21165 equals 85% as a decimal is 0 0.85. And then rather than writing of the new, because mathematicians are quite lazy sometimes, or at least I am, I'm just going to put N, <laughs> which is good enough. Okay, so of the new becomes n. Now, if I want to make n the subject of the formula, what I do is I divide through by 0 0.85. So basically, n is equal to 21165 divided by 0 0.85. And that gives me a value of 24,900. Now, effectively, 24,900 is the new price of the car not mine. Okay, let's move on then to question number three. All right, so in question number three, we've got um, a situation where we're comparing speed, distance, and time formulas. So if I look at Kirav, okay, so here's Kirav, and we're looking at speed equals distance over time. Okay, now hopefully you're fairly familiar with that particular formula. I know some people use triangles and all sorts of things. I just remember it, but speed is distance over time, works for me. Okay, so we can now feed in some information into it. So we're saying he does a distance of 60 kilometers and he does it in one hour and 35 minutes. The way I'd write that is one whole hour and then 35 over 60, because remember that we need to convert that 35 minutes into hours. So it's the same as saying 35 over 60. And because this is a calculator question, then we we can just use the buttons on the calculator to be able to work it out. Okay, so therefore, when I plug all of this into the calculator, I'm going to get Kira's um, average speed of 37.89 kilometers per hour. Then I'm going to do exactly the same with Vicky. Okay, and we're saying speed equals distance over time. Okay, so her distance is going to be 80 kilometers. And her time is going to be two whole hours and then 10 out of 60 minutes. So it's exactly the same principle. 10 out of 60 is one sixth of an hour. And that's fine for me to be able to do that. I know it's 10 minutes and that's fine. OK, so therefore, when I plug this into a calculator, I'm going to get 36.9 kilometres per hour. Now, the lowest average speed is going to be Vicky. So therefore, that would be the answer 
to that particular question. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's okay for you. Again, there's lots of speed, distance, time type calculations on the website as well. Let's move on then to a density type question, which is question number four. Okay, so question number four, we've got a solid cuboid is made of plastic. Okay, don't get too hung up about this word cuboid. It just basically means a cube. Okay, so a cube is made of plastic. Uh, it's not really a cube, it's a rectangular prism. Just remember that. Okay, so uh, this cuboid is made of plastic. Plastic is density of that. Okay, so again, you might uh, have a way of remembering this. I just remember density equals mass divided by volume. Okay, now what we're being asked to do is to work out the mass of this particular cuboid. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by volume, which means that mass is going to be equal to density times volume. Now we know the density is 0 0.95, which is we're told there, and the volume is going to be 12 times 8 times 18. I'm actually just going to write those into a bracket. So 12 times uh, 18 times 8, okay, will give me the total mass. And when I calculate that, I get 1641. 0.6 grams, which is equal to the mass. And that's the answer to my question. Okay, so please do, if you're not sure about anything, always make a comment below. And I've got playlists that I can also send you a link through to, to try other things as well. So there are mass and density type questions on the channel as well. Okay, let's move on then to question number five. Now in question number five, we're dealing with a pie chart becoming increasingly popular with um, non-calculator and calculator type questions. So this one is going to be a little bit tricky to put together, but hopefully you'll get the idea that effectively what we're doing is using the 360 degrees of a circle to represent the 60 people that expressed a preference for a particular type of takeaway. So in other words, 360 divided by 60 means that every single choice is equal to six degrees. And this is the important one. And when you've got this particular number, we're saying that 360 divided by 60 people is equal to six degrees. And that particular number is the most important number when you're dealing with pie charts. Because if each one of these choices is six degrees, then it means Italian is going to be 17 times six, which is going to equal to 102. And Indian is nine times six, which is equal to 54. And then 18 times six is equal to 108. Uh, 12 times 6 is equal to 72, and then 4 times 6 is equal to 24. So that's actually going to give you a total of 360 degrees because each of those is the degrees. OK, and then really it's just a case of plotting that directly onto the actual pie chart itself. Now, this is where it's going to be a little bit tricky on the video, but we'll see how we get on with it. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my calculator and I'm going to look for Italian. Now, Italian, I know, is 102 degrees. So I'm going to mark that there by a little dot. I'm going to put a line across. OK, and that's uh, for the purposes of this video. Hopefully this is OK for you. All right. Italian Indian is going to be 54 degrees. Now, I need to make sure that my protractor is at zero at this line. I'm going to come around to 54 degrees, put a little dot OK, hopefully you can see that on the screen. I'll just move that up very, very slightly. OK, there's my little dot for 54 degrees and that's going to be Indian. OK, and I'm labelling this as I go just because it's a little bit easier for me. So Turkish is now 108 degrees. So again, I'm going to put my protractor onto zero, make sure it's onto zero. And then I'm going to come around to 108 degrees. I think that's probably off slightly off the video, but you'll be able to see that when I draw the line. Now remember that it's always worthwhile checking. What I'm looking here at this point is I know that 108 is past 
90 degrees and 90 degrees is a right angle so therefore I know this must be greater than a right angle in order to do this properly okay so the next one then is Chinese which is 72 degrees which is this one here so again I'm going to make sure my protractor is on zero at this point here 72 is all the way up there I'm going to draw a little line in here okay and that's going to be uh, Chinese Okay, and then the last one, which I would check is 24 degrees, which is this one, which I'm going to label as other. Okay, and that's actually the answer to that particular question. So it does take a little bit of time to work through. Please do visit the site. There are, I'm sure, I think, some pie chart type questions. But either way, once you've got that value of six in this particular case, because you've got 360 and 60 people, then each person is going to be six degrees. Once you've got that six, they're fairly straightforward with these types of videos. Uh, these types of questions. Okay, the very final question is going to be one where we're going to be using a ruler and compass in order to construct a 60 degrees angle. Okay, well, the ruler in this particular case is only actually going to be used for drawing the line because what we can say with our compasses is that if I have this length here with our compass and I just basically construct what would be effectively a equilateral triangle then each corner of the equilateral triangle each corner of the equilateral triangle is equal to 60 degrees so therefore I can just use my ruler to construct the 60 degrees for one of the corners and that's the answer to that particular question so let's do that OK, so I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a line from here to where those two arcs cross. And that means this is 60 degrees. And basically, that's the answer to the question. OK, I hope that's been useful to you. It's only a quick 10 minute overview of the kind of questions that you're going to get aimed at about three to four foundation level. Hope it's been useful. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.